Sometime in 2023, I watched Scott Yujan's video about organizing his drawers. And then I watched it again. And then I watched it again. And then I caught this bit from it. You don't have to start from scratch. There are a lot of really cool organization systems online like Gridfinity, which are open source and have a lot of different modules already designed, openly available and completely free. So I checked out Zach Friedman's Gridfinity and I had watched videos and videos. And finally I said to myself, I'm gonna buy a printer. With no engineering background or 3D product design background or product design background, I bought this printer and then was pleasantly surprised at how helpful the community is at getting you up and running. I mean, you can get up and running really, really quickly. And now I've sunk a lot of hours into my 3D printer and I love it. And I'm just realizing there was no beginner's beginner guide to get started. And that's what today's video is about. Maybe your feed is full of 3D printing, but you haven't yet pulled the trigger on buying a printer or you've watched a few of these videos and you're inspired, but you don't think you can ever do that. I'm here to tell you, you can. It's pretty easy to get started and let's make this as efficient as possible for you so that you can just watch all the best videos from the best creators and then get started and be able to create your own Scott Yujon organization system, which I thought was impossible like three to six months ago. And now I realize I can do that in like, a couple weeks. Let's get started with what 3D printer should I buy? If you haven't researched that at all, this is fine. If you have, there are probably two that come on the radar. One would be the Anycubic Cobra Neo series, the one and the two, and the other would be the Ender series. And the reason these are probably on your radar is because they're under $200. I think I just bought the Ender 3 for $169 like last month. I have a strong opinion on this because I've owned both. I first started with the Anycubic Cobra Neo one and then moved to the Anycubic Cobra Neo 2. And that was great, but it was a little bit more of a black box. And what I mean by that is you don't learn about any of the different parts of the 3D printer. And that's great because if you just wanna get started and get a product back, this is a printer that will do that. And it got me motivated to keep learning 3D printing because there was instant gratification. However, like any black box, mine broke pretty early on and I was not able to fix it whatsoever. The troubleshooting on Anycubic was tough, not great. The community is not huge. The customer support was non-existent. And overall, my printer broke and it's completely broken still. Like I have not used it. And I almost gave up on 3D printing. And then I moved to the Ender 3. This is the baseline model from Creelty, and I absolutely love this thing. It is more modular than the Anycubic. So when your 3D printer breaks or there's gonna be troubleshooting, there is a video and a really good step-by-step -step video for pretty much everything that you're gonna come across. And its quality is just as good. It's just a little harder to get up and running. You know, putting together this modular printer is more time up front, but it will save you time in the long run. So without a doubt, I would recommend that you start with the Ender 3. You don't need the Pro, you don't need the Max, you don't need V2. I would just start with the Ender 3. It's the least expensive and the community for it is exceptional. How to set up your 3D printer. I would give yourself three to four hours to set up your printer. Now, this sounds like a lot of time. And if you're like me, when I was first starting out, I was like, how long does that actually mean? But I mean, for us, the beginners, it means three to four hours. There is a YouTube channel called Chep, and this guy is fantastic. I'm gonna link both of his setup videos below. And for someone who is brand new to 3D printing, in three to four hours, you should be able to follow all the steps and get your Ender 3 up and running. A big recommendation that I would have here is figure out where you're going to put your 3D printer before you assemble it. When I had the Anycubic running, it was in my office and it let out this horrendous burnt plastic smell all day. Now the Ender seems to be a little bit better, but even so I realized I was gonna move this into the garage and I was gonna enclose it. I didn't want the smell getting all over. And also I wanted a little bit of like protection in case something went wrong or whatever. I'm gonna link the case that I bought, which I actually received as a gift. My dad got it for me. I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks. And this enclosure is awesome. One thing we don't think about as beginners is how much something like draft or even like movement could affect the 3D print. So I put it in the garage where if you're walking around it, the table's not gonna wobble. And I put it in an enclosure because if there's a draft coming into the garage or the garage door comes up or whatever, you don't want all of that wind to be hitting your 3D printer. So 
I am gonna link the case that I got from Creelty and it's awesome. I would recommend buying this in conjunction with your 3D printer. It's big. I mean, this whole setup is pretty big. Look at the dimensions before you buy that, but it's recommended. What filament should I buy? Well, when you're buying your 3D printer, I would recommend you also buy a roll of filament. Filament, think about that like paper for a regular printer. It's what is getting used, it's the material. Your ender will come with like a small roll of filament, but if you don't wanna wait a few days after you run through that, you're gonna to have to get some yourself. So I bought like some of the cheaper stuff off Amazon. You could see here some of the details about it, 1.75 millimeters. That is what I would recommend for you just getting started. Also notice that this filament comes with a temperature recommendation on it. That is something to keep in mind for after you get started, but we can get into that a little bit later and I wouldn't worry too much about it right now. How do I level my 3D printing bed? This is a crucial step in 3D printing and it's not to like level it like a bubble level. What you need is you need the nozzle to be equal distance away from the printing bed at all times. I mean, you could print at a 45 degree angle as long as the nozzle was the same distance all around the bed. So this will feel complicated when you watch some of these videos and I'm going to link to a couple from CHEP and a few other channels, but there's something called the paper test where you just manually are get familiar with your software and you can drag the head around and you like see if it's level. So follow these steps in some of these explainer videos and if you still have problems, you can feel free to leave a comment, but um, just know that like the first few times that you do it, it might not click but after you do it a few times and you do a couple test prints, you'll start to realize you know, how to level it. And once you are able to do that, you're pretty much good to go. How do you design 3D prints? I would say watch a few of the videos that I'm gonna link in my description. And you could see here that these people give you an overview of the main players in the 3D modeling space. One's gonna be Fusion 360, uh, Onshape is a great one. And there's a video that I'm gonna link for how to get a free Onshape account, and also Tinkercad. And this might be the easiest one to get started with because you're just like dragging blocks around and it's an intuitive software. When you're getting started 3D printing, if you're trying to improve organization, I wouldn't necessarily start with complicated designs, even if they're the thing that you wanna organize the most. Start with blocks or cubes. Do things that can be helpful to you, but then, are also easy to pull off so you learn certain things. These are things that will just get you comfortable in the design software and then let you move it over to the printer to see if you can get something to go from like idea to finished product. And likely in the beginning, there's gonna be some troubleshooting, but like I mentioned, the Ender 3 community is unbelievable at troubleshooting. So the first couple of prints might be bad. You'll just Google it, you'll see a Reddit thread or Chep's YouTube channel or something that's gonna show you how to fix this, then you're gonna fix it. And while you're doing this, and this is gonna be probably a good 10 hours of your first prints, just like printing something, knowing that it's gonna fail, trying to fix it, etc. you're gonna build this like crazy competence in 3D printing and get a lot of confidence to do whatever you want on the 3D printer. And it doesn't take that much time. I mean, 10 hours to build this skill to be able to prototype whatever you want is to me an awesome trade. What else should I buy when I'm buying my 3D printer? This is a great question. When you look at the price tag of 169, you're thinking, oh, that's not much to get started, but then I'm telling you to get an enclosure case, and then I'm telling you to get some PLA and all this other stuff. So it ends up being a little bit more expensive. Here's a list of things that I would consider or strongly recommend that you buy alongside your 3D printer. The enclosure case, you're gonna need a couple eight gigabyte SD cards, because this is gonna be what goes into the 3D printer and that's what you're gonna print from. I would recommend a set of like PLA cutters or wire cutters, they're $6 off Amazon. There are some that come with the Ender, but for me, it's really nice to have two. And also the ones that I got off Amazon are a little better for six bucks. You're gonna want cable ties for wire management. So if you don't have any of those, there are some that come with the 3D printer. I ran out of mine really quickly. Make sure you have paper clips or binder clips or whatever they're called, this is gonna be what holds the Ender 3 to the machine. Then there's a bunch of optional stuff that you can get. I got a glass bed for my Ender 3 to help like take the shapes off easier. I think that was 20 bucks. I also bought something for the PTFE tube, which you'll learn about what that is through all these videos, but um, I was having issues with mine. So for like 12 bucks, I bought one that Chep recommended and that was really helpful. 
and all of these small accessory things that will help you optimize your print. But in the beginning, the stock stuff that comes with it is likely enough to just get you started, get you successful, print a few things, and you will have the knowledge to decide if you need to buy anything else. I hope you found this helpful. If you're on the fence and you needed a little bit of a push to get started, then maybe this is that push to actually buy the 3D printer. And with just like a week or two of tinkering and experimenting, I'm confident that you'll find that this is much easier and less intimidating than it looks. Let me know in the comments if you end up going through with this. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one.